Good morning and welcome to the Zinwald Lithium PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time by the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Anton Duplessis, CEO. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you very much. And thanks to Investimeet for uh, hosting this webinar. Um, we really wanted to take the opportunity of uh, speaking to shareholders and investors today, um, really in the light of, um, primarily in the light of the PEA that we uh, put out to the market um, last week and which uh, summarized and, and demonstrated our revised technical uh, plan for, for the project. And so that's really going to be the main uh, area that I'll focus on today. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on, on each slide. I'll focus on, on some more than others, uh, given we, we're trying to keep this um, not too long. Uh, the standard uh, disclaimer, um, which, which one can read on our, on our website. Um, overview, really, for those uh, less familiar with our company, we're an AIM-listed um, uh, lithium uh, development company. Our project uh, is the 100% owned Zinbot Lithium Project, which is located in the former East Germany. It's uh, located about 35 kilometers south of Dresden on the Czech-German border. Um, as I mentioned before, we recently put out a, a PEA study for the project that demonstrates um, uh, a project focused on producing battery grade lithium hydroxide uh, with a strong pre-tax NPV of 1.6 billion uh, and a very large resource. It's located uh, uh, in an excellent location, really very much in the heart of the German automotive and chemical sectors. And the backdrop um, for lithium demand is, is extremely strong. And I'll get into some of these matters in a little bit more detail in a moment. Uh, in terms of kind of our key project highlights, uh, I've mentioned before location, you can see on that map on the right, uh, we're very much in the heart of where um, there are existing and, and uh, being developed um, battery factories. Um, so extremely well located from that, that perspective within uh, just a few hundred kilometers of our project are, are really kind of almost the bulk of, of um, uh, battery demand uh, or, already existing and expected for, for Europe. Um, we will be a, a meaningful supplier, so we'll produce uh, around 12,000 uh, tons per annum of, of battery grade lithium hydroxide. Uh, we're a fully integrated producer, or we will be a fully integrated producer when, when built. Uh, the economics of the project, uh, as demonstrated in the, in the uh, PEA, are very, very robust. Uh, Pre-tax NPV on an 8% discount rate, $1.6 billion. Uh, Pre-tax IRR of uh, 39% and a simple payback uh, following start of production of, of only three and a half years, or less than three and a half years. Very long life, so we'll uh, support a life of, of over 35 years based on the uh, existing resource. And as I mentioned before, located very close to, um, to end markets. Our uh, processing technology, uh, which we've been uh, demonstrating by an extensive test work program is, is simple and trialed uh, in several other uh, commodities. Of, um, so, so you know, uh, less uh, um, tech, we try to mitigate the technical risk of the project on on that side. Um, the area that we're located in um, has uh, been a mining area for a long time in the past, so there's existing infrastructure in in the area. Uh, so uh, byproducts, I mean, unlike um, some other lithium projects in other parts of the world, we do have uh, extensive byproducts which are valuable. Our key byproducts are. Uh, sulfate of potash, which is fertilizer, and um, precipitated calcium carbonate, which is uh, used as a filler in the paper industry. Uh, what's key to, to any project is, is minimizing waste uh, and, and, and improving efficiency or having uh, as efficient a project as possible, uh, primarily in terms of, of, of energy use and use of reagents. Um, and you know we like to think that, that what, we, what we have is a very low or zero waste operation with a possibility to find markets and applications really for the bulk of what we produce. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, we will be a meaningful employer and generate significant tax revenues in the area um, that we will be operating in. 
which we think has, uh, you know, has broader uh, societal benefits. In terms of the lithium market, I think uh, a lot of people are, are familiar. Um, primary end use obviously is uh, in electric vehicles, but increasingly also in stationary storage. Uh, and as the, um, uh, the amount of renewable energy in grids increases, that storage element is, is be becoming increasingly important. We're seeing that as you know, a, a huge area of, of uh, demand for, for lithium ion batteries and, and, and therefore Lithium. Um, the, the price performance of lithium, uh, particularly lithium carbonate, lithium hydroxide, has been uh, really quite astonishing over the last couple of years. This chart on the bottom left um, shows the recent development with the spot price uh, for lithium uh, hydroxide, you know, touching eighty thousand um, uh, dollars over the summer, um, and. Uh, you know, relative to the price we're assuming in our PA, which is twenty two and a half thousand uh, dollars, you know, spot price and considerably above that, and obviously supported by um, an expectation of a market deficit for some time to come, as is illustrated on that chart from past markets on the on the right. Europe, in particular, very focused on the green, what they call the green transition, um, and there was a statement out of out of EU Commissioner Ursula von der Leyen just yesterday about uh, a critical raw materials act to um, uh, focus on uh, really securing supply of the materials that Europe needs for that green transition. So um, if anything, uh, macro events like the war in Ukraine, the, the pandemic have highlighted the need for local supply. And, uh, you know, that 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 has formed a formed and remains a core of, of EU strategy. Uh, and then that is in line with, with what the market is doing. So you've seen announcements for uh, 27 battery gigafactories in Europe. So Europe is really becoming a, a critical area of demand for battery metals, of which lithium is obviously a key one. Moving on to our project itself, um, there's just a little map here that shows the location. We're located, as I mentioned, on the Czech-German border. Um, our nearest the large town is, is Freiburg. Um, we'll be an integrated operation, so producing all the way through to uh, battery grade lithium hydroxide. So we, we won't, unlike some projects, produce to a semi product. Uh, we will we will be a, a sort of an end end producer of, of what goes into a, into a battery or into the cathode. Um, we'll be a small footprint underground mine. Uh, and then we'll have the associated mineral and chemical processing on site. Um, byproducts, I think I've mentioned before, high purity potassium sulfate and precipitated calcium carbonate. Uh, and then we have a, a, a mining license um, through to 2047 uh, and extendable beyond then. Um, just on this map here, you can see that uh, our uh, license areas cover a deposit that's really part of a much larger deposit um, south of the border in, in the Czech Republic, uh, those licenses are held by um, uh, by the Cinebec project. Um, and in fact, uh, the, it's, it's really one continuous ore body. And on the picture on the right here, you can see me underground in uh, the old mine that's been there for, for, for several hundred years, actually. And that's the, the, the Czech-German border uh, uh, just on, uh, on that post behind me. In terms of why we changed the concept and how we've changed the concept, this slide really just goes through a little bit of the history of the project um, and the company since since we've uh, uh, controlled it. So we acquired the first 50% um, of the Zinvolt project back uh, in October 2020 when we created Zinvolt Lithium. Uh, we then uh, spent some time consolidating ownership. The other ownership, the other 50% of, of the project was owned by a, a German company called SolarWorld. We acquired uh, that interest in June 2021, and that then gave us full control of the project and the ability to really relook at the the whole technical um, uh, sort of design behind it. Uh, the previous project was focused on uh, a niche product, lithium fluoride, and the production of um, around 5,000 tons per annum of that. Um, so. Um, based on on uh, an analysis of the market conversations with uh, with sort of consumers of, of lithium compounds uh, very clear that um, 
uh, lithium hydroxide uh, would, would be a, a better area to focus. We then spent um, some time proving that we could make, make battery grade hydroxide both technically feasibly and, and, and economically feasibly. We completed those tests in March uh, of this year, and that then laid the foundation for um, kind of what is summarized in, in our PEA uh, as the revised technical concept. So we've moved from 25, uh, from 50% of a project making or aim to make uh, just over 5,000 tons per annum of lithium fluoride to 100% of a project that, that can make, um, you know, around 12,000 tons per annum of lithium hydroxide with upside potential from, uh, from some of our uh, satellite deposits to that. Uh, we've also sought to optimize uh, the entire material flow within the project because that has important um, uh, cost uh, operating cost implications. It also has implications in terms of minimizing the impact on on surrounding areas. And so um, we've we've uh, sort of adopted a, a, a policy of trying to um, uh, you know keep everything uh, keep the transport uh, costs uh, you know significantly lower through through reducing that. Uh, and that obviously has a, a knock on benefit in terms of reducing our our CO two impact and everywhere we've tried to look at how we can use infrastructure that already exists in the area to maximum benefit uh, of, of the project. This is uh, quite an interesting chart. Um, it shows effectively a, a long section uh, with the Czech German border on the sort of far right of this picture um, and then some of the existing infrastructure that I referred to earlier as well as where the Zinvol deposit is. So over on the right, you can see you can see the Zinvolt deposit. Um, the sort of light gray uh, area down here is the existing access tunnel, uh, which is part of the existing infrastructure. There's also um, existing shafts uh, to an old tin mine. And really, the concept that we've laid out in the PEA is trying to utilize some of this existing infrastructure um, for ventilation, mine access, etc. Importantly, here. Um, you know what you can see is we we would be uh, able to access our deposit from from below, which uh, has significant benefits in terms of of material flow. Um, we'll we'll also be looking at how we can use uh, electric mining fleets as part of this concept again to reduce CO two and reduce energy costs. What you can also see on on this chart over on the on the left is our sort of proposed site area will will also allow uh, reasonably close access to uh, to one of our uh, satellite licenses, uh, Falkenhayn, which we're in the process of doing exploration drilling on at the moment. In terms of overall resource, uh, core Zinvolt uh, license um, has a uh, thirty five and a half million ton measure indicated resource. Uh, it also has uh, another four million tons of inferred, so forty million tons overall resource that supports uh, over thirty five years of mine life at that twelve thousand ton annual production rate. We have a mining license on that deposit that's valid until twenty forty seven. and this is this is really is one of the larger identified lithium resources in Europe. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's it's um, you know contiguous with the uh, with the ore body across the border. In addition to that, we have quite an interesting um, uh, sort of regional footprint in terms of uh, other exploration licenses in the area. So we've got the Falkenhayn exploration licenses uh, exploration license, which is just seven kilometers from from our core license. Uh, we've we've done a detailed review of the historical exploration data on that license uh, and that has indicated to us the potential uh, for a lithium resource there. Uh, we're in the process of, of testing that. We have an exploration program consisting of 10 diamond drill holes uh, that we started uh, earlier this month uh, and that coupled with the analysis of old core um, will hopefully allow us to, to, to prove up the potential of that deposit and, and also work out how that could fit with the broader project and how it could how we could use that potentially to expand production beyond the 12,000 tons that we've contemplated in the PEA thus far. We also own the Zadestorf, or we hold the Zadestorf exploration license, uh, which is um, uh, you know around 12 kilometers from 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 the Zinvold license. 
that has an, an historic joke uh, resource uh, on it, uh, 25 million tons um, uh, with a with a uh, with you know with a lithium uh, with recognized lithium on that. Um, and then we also own, also control the uh, Altenburg exploration license, which uh, you know really governs the step out from from our core license, and and you know it provides us with the potential to expand resources at at the core li core license through that. We also think there's significant upside potential through um, uh, new processing technologies or, or, or really ore sorting technologies. And this is something we've been extensively testing over the last uh, couple, couple of months. Um, we've been doing work both looking at hyperspectral analysis as well as uh, laser ore sorting. Those tests have been um, uh, very positive and very encouraging in terms of proving the viability of of these technologies. And really what it means is uh, if it can be effectively applied, it'll allow us to separate low grade particles from the material flow, which um, you know means you can do that before putting them into the more expensive processing stages. So it's a you know, significant saving in terms of, uh, uh, of operating cost. Um, there's also the potential to increase resources if, if, if this um, technology can be applied. Uh, and that could be that could be significant. Um, it's not often that technology changes in mining, but really all sorting technology uh, is something that's that's come up in the last um, in the last sort of a decade and a half probably, and is really something that 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 is changing changing the industry. And it's very encouraging for us that this is a technology that, that we've demonstrated can be applied uh, to to our project. In terms of our flow sheet, we've tested this extensively with, um, uh, you know, a significant uh, bulk sample. Um, we, we've uh, and we've done it at a, at a pilot scale. Um, uh, most of the test work's been done uh, at a firm called uh, KUTech in uh, in Germany, who specialise in, in salt technologies. Um, and really, I think the main point to make here is there's no aspect of this flow sheet that hasn't been proven in other mining operations uh, in, in its various component parts. So there's not there's not there's nothing kind of new or, or, or unique about this, but putting it together in this way, uh, we think gives us a very good result. Central to the design of our of our flow sheet is trying to minimize uh, waste. Um, and really, you know, kind of what we're aiming for is, is, is an extremely low waste operation. So um, one of the main discard streams is quartz sand that um, uh, can be used uh, as a construction aggregate uh, for road making, uh, making concrete, etc. Um, so it has a potential use. Um, and then our, our, our main products, we you know we we, we produce significant quantities of, of quite valuable byproducts. So uh, fifty seven thousand tons approximately of of SAP that will primarily go into the fertilizer industry. Although we do make, um, we've proven that we can make a, a, a very high purity version of SAP. And that traditionally carries a, a premium price in, in the market. 16,000 tons of precipitated calcium carbonate that's uh, typically used as a, as a filler for making um, uh, glossy papers uh, in, in the paper industry. And then obviously our primary product is the 12,000 tons per annum of, um, of lithium hydroxide. Uh, in terms of inputs, um, you know, nothing uh, sort of particularly uh, toxic in there. We have very low usage of, uh, of acids. Um, and one of the main sort of discards from uh, our sort of manufacturing process is the, is the leach residue. And the concept there is that that uh, get, gets put back underground as, as backfill uh, to prevent subsidence and the like. So really, the whole idea here is to try and minimize minimize waste and maximize valuable, saleable byproducts. Another point to make on the byproducts is the markets that those will go into are very big markets. So there's little risk of us uh, swamping those markets with the volume that, that, that we produce. So it's, it's very highly saleable. Location infrastructure advantages. I've talked a little bit about this before. Um, there are a number of, of uh, infrastructure um, aspects uh, of the region that, that we will operate in that, that benefit us. Um, 
uh, it is a developed region. There is rail, there is gas, there is electricity. Uh, these are all um, you know, vital elements of, of any mining project. We've also talked about the potential to use existing tunnels in the area. Um, you know, this creates some very exciting opportunities for us in terms of how we access deposit, how, how we manage material flows, um, uh, and, and, and how, we, how we develop things going forward. This is just a, a few pictures of, of, of the access tunnel. As you can see, it's in extremely good condition. Uh, we've been able to access that um, uh, to, to review it. And, and uh, you know, it's extremely favorable for, for what we're trying to do. Now, coming to, to the actual output of the PA in terms of numbers, um, obviously, there are a lot of assumptions that lie behind this um, and a lot of work that lies behind this. But uh, this is just to lay out um, uh, the broad the broad results. So pre-tax NPV, $1.6 billion. Pre-tax RR, 39%. Post-tax NPV, and this is on an unlevered uh, basis. Um, so assuming no debt uh, for illustrative purposes as a standard for these kinds of studies. So that shows a post-tax NPV of, a, of, of around a billion dollars and a post-tax RR of, of 29%. So extremely strong numbers. Initial construction cost uh, just over 300 million. Um, and average life of mine operating uh, cost. So it's key to, for us because of the, the, the high volume of, of byproducts that we have. Um, we're looking at a, a post byproduct uh, credit operating cost of around uh, $6,200, so just over $6,000. And that plays the current spot price for lithium over $70,000 and current contract prices for lithium um, to the extent that one can see them in the market of, uh, you know, well north of $30,000. So um, in terms of current market conditions, that's um, ex extremely competitive. Uh, it'll, um, you know, be a, a cash generative business once it gets into operation. Uh, average life of mine, EBITDA of, of close to $200 million. Now, the underlying price assumption here is $22,500. We've based that on um, really looking at what a whole range of commentators are saying about where pricing is. It's obviously well below current spot levels, but we're uh, you know, trying to take a you know, relatively realistic and conservative uh, approach to that um, and, and obviously realize that Current pricing, you know, reflects a moment in the market, um, but certainly the the uh, forecast supports uh, uh, the level we're showing here. And certainly, other studies that have come out by um, you know, peers have indicated levels, uh, in some cases, well well above that. On the right hand side, you can see just a, a simple sensitivity chart showing, obviously, greater sensitivity to to the lithium price assumption, but a pretty robust. Um, project, uh, you know, even taking some fairly significant haircuts um, to some of those assumptions or, you know, pushing up OPEX or, 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 or CAPEX assumptions, depending on how, how things move around. In terms of the overall project development timetable, you know, we've, we've detailed some of this in the, in the PEA, um, you know, obviously, in, you know, a number of milestones uh, along here. Um, some of these things are, are, are in our control. Other things, um, you know, we will be reliant on uh, inputs uh, and decisions by others. So this really sets out you know, some of the some of the, the, the core areas. Intention is to have our bankable feasibility study, which is really a core document in terms of um, you know the ultimate construction funding of the project. Uh, to be complete by the end of next year. Alongside that, we're working on on other key streams, which is really around the um, permitting. Uh, part of that is 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 the EIA, public engagement, etc. As I mentioned, some of these things um, are not obviously fully in our control because we will be reliant on interactions with with authorities and and, and uh, you know both lo local and and uh, at a state level and a national level. Uh, but but this is really what what. Uh, we're aiming for on, on a broad basis um, with the intention of, of really trying to be in production late 2026 uh, or thereabouts, which we think will also coincide with an extremely strong moment in the market if what projectors, uh, you know, what comment market, market commentators are saying around, um, you know, supply deficit in, uh, comes to pass. 
sustainability key to everything we do. Um, I mentioned before, you know, a lot of the work that's gone into the project we've designed as part of the PEA is around limiting, uh, you know, the impact on the environment. That's the physical impact. It's also the impact in terms of CO2 on an ongoing basis. So trying to minimize transport, um, you know, trying to uh, really limit the, uh, the impact of this project um, you know, on, on the environment. And certainly, you know, against, you know, every different type of technology or project has different advantages and disadvantages. Um, you know, we think in, in a lot of these areas, we have, have material advantages. Uh, again, ESG, fundamental to this, I've talked a lot about the environmental impact, social, uh, another key area, um, this project will bring a considerable number of jobs to um, you know, this uh, region of Germany. Um, it's a region that has um, you know, been subject to demographic change, aging population and, uh, you know, and a reducing population. And we think being able to bring jobs and tax revenue back to the area is something that's, that's going to be uh, appreciated. And then in terms of governance, we're a, we're a UK listed PLC and take very seriously our, our obligations um, uh, from that. Strategy and focus. Um, so really, you know, increasing production potential being a, a uh, significant supplier to the European market, we think is, uh, is core to what we're doing. We'll always seek to optimize the project in terms of cost position and CO2 footprint, which is increasingly important for, for people who, who utilize uh, lithium compounds. Um, and then obviously maximizing the overall uh, economic um, uh, construct of the of the project in terms of maximizing byproducts and and minimizing waste. Um, near term, I think I've talked about this. So really, uh, you know, key thing is is um, completing the the bankable, which we hope to do by the end of next year. There are a lot of components to that, including including the drilling, um, but also the exploration drilling that we're doing so that we can demonstrate the upside uh, and then optimizing optimizing the project um, and then just to really just to close uh, on on the presentation um, integrated project um, so all the way to to a battery grade product really much really in the heart of, of Europe's uh, both the chemical and the automotive industries uh, meaningful resource position so a long life asset so this uh, is an asset that is capable of catching several cycles um, so the option value inherent in in the project is significant we believe um, we're working on a plan to, uh, to to get into production to advance the project and then the fundamentals you know relative to a lot of commodities the fundamentals for, for lithium lithium hydroxide are extremely strong and then we we have uh, an experienced leadership team and we also have a, have a team on the ground in Germany, many of whom have been with the project since its inception. Uh, and we're, we're working and expanding on expanding that team uh, and bringing in the necessary uh, uh, disciplines that, that we don't have at the moment and expanding some that we, that we, that we do. Thank you. Anton, thank you very much for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just using the Q&A tab situated on the top right corner of your screen. I'd also like to remind you that the recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Anton, we received a number of pre-submitted questions from investors, and I wanted to start up the Q&A session with these. The first one reads as follows. How long will Europe need to import lithium for? I think uh, if what... Uh, people are kind of forecasting in terms of um, lithium demand. So I think you've, you've kind of seen the, the overall lithium market a couple of years ago was only about 400,000 tons per annum. Um, I've seen forecasts for Europe by 2030 of 800,000 to a million tons of lithium demand in Europe alone. So a significant volume, and that's backed up by the plans for, for new gigafactories. Etc. Um, I think if all of the projects currently on the table to to produce lithium in Europe, and it's important to, to note that there is no domestic production of lithium in Europe right now, um, but if all of the projects that, that that are on the slate come to be, that will that will not fulfil that that level of demand. So Europe really is going to be a, a an importer of, of lithium for some time to come, and that just amplifies kind of how important it is to have 
you know, as much of that supplied locally as possible. But, you know, it, it's not like we will get crowded out by other players. If we all perform, it still won't be enough. Perfect. Thank you very much. The next question here um, says, I understand that only the, fe the feasibility study is required to start mining. Have the required authorities greenlighted it? Um, I think I addressed this in, in the sort of development plan. Um, we have to go through a permitting process um, with the authorities, and that's going to be key, um, you know, one of the key things uh, in order to, to get the project finally greenlit. But, and that's an ongoing process. Perfect. Thank you very much. And another, another question around the project, and it asks, do, do you have good local slash political support for the project? Um, so we spent a lot of time with, uh, you know, with politicians. Uh, you know, this is obviously a key for for any project, and and certainly uh, the feeling we have is is there is a lot of uh, support for this project uh, in in Germany. Thank you very much. Just turning over to the next question. I see that Europe has been funding battery frack factories. Is it doing the same for mining projects? Europe has put a lot of money into, or the EU, I should say, has put a lot of money into into stimulating uh, the growth of, of battery factories. I think they've um, voted over over three billion euros for for that purpose. And I guess their strategy has been to kind of start with, you know, that that core piece. Um, I think they've been slow on on actual uh, on actually uh, you know doing something meaningful around raw material. Um, but that is changing, and I, uh, I don't know if people saw, but, but yesterday um, uh, the EU uh, sort of made a statement around um, you know, critical mineral supply and how important it is. Uh, and so I think we can expect to see you know, some, some action from the EU, and we certainly hope to see some action from the EU in terms of actually supporting raw material suppliers. Although, um, you know, given that they are uh, you know, very much local things by virtue of you can't move resources around uh, you know a lot of a lot of what happens practically will fall on the on the states uh, and regions in which which the projects actually reside thank you very much anton um the next question here reads as follows the pea suggests production of circa twelve thousand tons per annum battery grade lithium hydroxide how much does europe need of lithium hydroxide in total so I think I've, I spoke about this um, uh, a moment ago. You know, projections are for you know eight hundred thousand a million tons of of, uh, of of lithium demand. So that includes you know all, all the compounds. I would expect that uh, hydroxide um, will, will form you know a significant proportion of that. Uh, it's difficult to say now which battery chemistries will predominate uh, as you know as as things advance. But I would guess that it's you know at least half to more than half of, of of that overall number would be my expectation. Thank you very much. Another question around demand, um, asking: Do you think the demand for lithium will reduce over time? No. If anything, I think it will increase as um, you know people become you know more sort of sold on the idea of electric cars as uh, charging um, facilities improve. As the cost of electric vehicles comes down, I can only see that the demand would would increase. Uh, and uh, you know, alongside that, you've got other areas of demand like um, stationary storage. Um, you know, and as renewable energy increases as, as a proportion of the grid, I see those things increasing as well. So, you know, as and the the cost of manufacture of lithium ion batteries, a big part of that cost is is actually in the kind of production infrastructure of, of, of that. Um, as you see the cumulative capacity increasing, you know, you get economies of scale and that that'll bring uh, you know, some of the some of the production cost of these things down. Um, so if we're seeing strong demand now with prices where they are, uh, I, I only see that demand would increase as as those uh, costs and, and, and um, cost of supply come down. Certainly. Um, just changing topic slightly. How much waste do you expect to generate and what will you do with it? 
so waste is is um, you know a, a big part of any project. Um, you know, and I, and I think I sort of went through this in terms of of our flow sheet. Really, what we focused on is trying to make this a as as low waste as possible. So um, you know, we, we've talked about byproducts. So you know, we'll produce be producing you know sixty thousand tons thereabouts of of SAP, sixteen thousand tons of PCC. So again, that's uh, you know what might be a waste stream in, 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 in other, you know, with a different flow sheet is actually turned into a saleable product uh, or highly saleable product in, in ours. Um, quartz sand is another uh, area that we will be generating a significant volume. And again, that is something that, that has a use. Um, we may have to store uh, some of that material on a temporary basis, but um, you know, it, it ultimately does have a use and we will seek to um, you know, to make sure that it that it's used and not and not stored as as a discard. Perfect. Thank you very much, Anton. And sticking to a similar theme, what are the benefits of using electrical equipment apart from the obvious green credentials? Yes. Yeah, so, in using an electric uh, sort of mining uh, system and fleet uh, is, is is core to our mine plans, and there's something certainly an area that we're going to um, you know focus on as as we refine our plans. Um, uh, so, you know, it, it, it has a number of advantages, obviously, in terms of kind of energy cost versus, you know, running diesel equipment, uh, it, it, it's lower, uh, electrical equipment is typically more efficient from a total energy use perspective. It's obviously more efficient in terms of or better from a CO2 perspective. And also when you're designing a mine from scratch, particularly an underground mine, being able to use uh, only electric equipment underground significantly changes your ventilation requirements and the costs associated with that. Uh, so a number of benefits. Um, Thank you very much indeed. Um, why have you used the $22,500 lithium hydroxide price in the PEA's financial model, given the LME spot price is significantly higher? So a lot of the market for lithium trades not on spot, but on longer term contract prices. Uh, it's not always easy to see what those contract prices are in the market, um, but they are lower and they're considerably lower than, than the spot price. Um, there are some players uh, who, who do disclose those, price, those prices and from what we've been able to observe contract pricings um, probably in the, in the mid 30,000s at the moment. So still well above the 22,500 that we're utilizing. Um, but remember, we you know we're trying to project a price out for um you know over 30 years here and so we have to be um you know somewhat conservative in, in terms of what what we use so we looked at what various forecasters are, are suggesting as as a long-term price um and 22 and a half thousand seems like uh, it's very much in in the zone of, of of what people are forecasting and as i mentioned before if you look at what you know, some other uh, projects have put out in their feasibility studies, uh, you know, they are using numbers well above that. Thank you very much. The next question is really around people and our schools in would face the same issues that others are in terms of sourcing qualified personnel. Sourcing qualified personnel is always a challenge. Um, and, you know, something we're, we're, we're focused on uh, all of the time. I think a project like ours, it's always important to remember with lithium projects is, is, a, is a significant chemical uh, element to them, uh, as well as mining. Uh, so you need really the two skill sets, you need, you know, both mining skills, as well as, as sort of chemical industry skills. And, you know, one of the advantages of being in the heart of, of what's really Europe's chemical industry in, in, in Germany is, you know, there are industrial chemists, um, universities do produce people with those skills. Um, and then on the mining side, um, you know, obviously there's been less mining activity in Germany more recently, but there has been there has been some. And Freiburg, um, which is uh, the nearest big town to our project, has a you know has a large and thriving uh, mining and geological faculty. So you know, again, that's helpful from that perspective. Thank you very much. The next question here reads as follows: The lithium price is on a constant upward trend. Zinwald is on a constant downward trend. Why is Zinwald missing out? So I think you have to see uh, share price, uh, you know, in, in the broader market context. So, um, you know, 
uh, share indices generally have have suffered this year. It's been a it's been a bad year for equities uh, for a number of region for a number of reasons. Not not least, um, you know, uh, a war in Europe uh, and the attendant shock uh, to to energy pricing. So, the AIM index this year is down thirty percent. Uh, and then if you look at the mining industry, you know, across commodities. Um, mining development companies um, have suffered uh, with, with share prices down, you know, as much as uh, sort of 50 and over 50%. And that has the lithium industry hasn't evaded that. So producers have benefited from high pricing and their share prices have, have responded to that. I'd say pretty much across the board, development projects, uh, companies that, that are predominantly development companies, have suffered, and that's really an indication of, of, of uh, you know, the, the the broader macroeconomic backdrop. We've also suffered, uh, you know, a significant turnover in our register, given that, um, uh, you know, corporate actions from, uh, you know, one of our large shareholders back in Aura, um, uh, meant that, you know, almost uh, forty percent of our register has turned over in the first six months of this of this year, which has an effect on the share price. Thank you very much. And the final pre-submitted question we have here is, can you comment on your funding strategy? Sure. So we're a, so we're a development company. And in order to progress the project, uh, we will require additional funds from, from time to time. Uh, we have, uh, you know, that said, we have cash on hand of um, uh, about five and a half million euros. Uh, and this... Um, and the fact that we've always adopted really, a, I guess, a, a prudent approach to to our balance sheet. So we, you know, we are cautious with the money we have, but at the same time, we want to advance the project um, as as quickly uh, and as efficiently as possible. Um, but you know, really, the fact that we have that uh, those funds on hand, um, you know, gives us the flexibility to manage when and in what form we we raise capital. So it's you know, it's something that we we're constantly looking at. Anton, thank you very much. That actually concludes the pre-submitted questions. But as you can see, we've received a number of questions throughout today's presentation. And thank you to the investors for submitting those. Could I just ask you to read out those questions and give responses where it is appropriate to do so, and then I'll pick up from you at the end. Sure. Uh, so could you please reconcile the US uh, 1.6 billion uh, NPV of the project together with a market cap of uh, you know, significantly less. So, uh, so we've got a market cap of just under forty million dollars, uh, and our pre-tax NPV, so theoretical value of the project, one point six billion post-tax, one billion. So, obviously, we're trading at at a fraction of our theoretical value, uh, and we would argue that, um, you know, that on that basis, we we are considerably undervalued, and part of the purpose of putting out uh, the study. Uh, was to demonstrate what what this project could be, and we hope that um, that investors begin to recognise that. What is your target date to become a meaningful supplier? So again, um, I think that's addressed in the presentation. Um, it is dependent on a number of, of work streams uh, being completed, uh, and that will depend on input from uh, and and uh, uh, approvals from from certain outside parties. But our intention is uh, is to try and be in production um, uh, late 2026. Are there any other examples of Zinvaldite being mined economically uh, elsewhere in the world? Um, not directly. No, I think there is a small operation in China that uh, that does uh, look at um, or that does uh, exploit uh, lithium-containing micas. Um, but really, as I mentioned in in the flow sheet, um, there are no aspects of our of our overall flow sheet that are particularly unique or haven't been applied in other mining operations around the world. Um, there's always something unique in putting everything together for, for a specific ore body. But you know, we have done extensive pilot scale tests uh, on our flow sheet. We don't think that um, there are any major issues that we can see at this point uh, on that front. Uh, um, what is the price per ton of quartz sand fertilizer in the paper product? We've got the details of that in, in the PA. Um, 
uh, if memory serves on, on fertilizer or on the SOP, and we're using a blended price for high, um, for high purity and, and fertilizer grade, I think we're using around 875 euros per ton. That's really the, the, the key, um, uh, the key uh, um, uh, by, uh, byproduct. Uh, on quartz sand, we're not assuming a particularly high price. It's not, it's not in the model as a, as a major contributor to, to revenue. Um, and uh, PCC, uh, again, if I recall, it's around, um, around 150 uh, euros per ton. Longer term uh, uh, funding assumptions around uh, the overall capex when it comes when we, you know when we get to the point where we've made a um, uh, a construction decision so that the three hundred and thirty six uh, million dollars of of capex um, you know again this is this is something that that the board will look into um, you know as we approach that moment but typically for for mining projects it'll be a mixture of of debt and equity. Um, you know, we will also actively pursue uh, grant type funding um, to the extent that, that 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 can be applied to this project. And we, you know, we are confident that um, you know that that there will be something on 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 that side as well. So it will be a mix. Uh, again, um, just talking about, you know, someone asking, have you noticed any interest from potential strategic partners or takers? Obviously, you know, the, those are kinds of uh, conversations which, um, you know, to the extent that, that progress to the level where the market, uh, you know, where there's something uh, that the market needs to know, we'll, we'll, we'll make announcements at, at that point. But, um, you know, we're always testing the market in terms of, in terms of our product. Um, uh, uh, yeah, and, you know, there's a, Point at which it's it's a good strategic decision to to enter into agreements on that. Um, you know, obviously the, the value of offtake gets more valuable the closer you are to uh, to actual production. So there's a bit of a strategic uh, game to be played there as well. I think if, as I kind of look through. Um, uh, as I look through uh, the rest of the questions, uh, it's a question of um, you know, uh, would would uh, um, they seem to be a bit jumbled up here. Um, do directors believe they personally own enough shares in the business? Um, you know, we're obviously exposed to the business um, through uh, long-term incentive plans that are very much aligned with um, with how the share price performs and how shareholders generally do. So it's very much aligned with shareholder interests. Uh, obviously we're constrained in terms of market purchases of shares given we are insiders uh, of, of the business. And I think uh, that really concludes the, the the questions. There are obviously some there that I cannot answer because they relate to uh, you know, matters that are um, uh, sort of, uh, you know sensitive or where regulation prevents me from answering them. But I think uh, the vast bulk of them I've, I've answered. Anton, certainly I think you have, and I think you've addressed those questions you can from investors. And of course, the company will review all questions submitted today, and will publish those responses on the Invest Meet Company platform. But just before redirect investors provide you with their feedback, which is particularly important to yourself. Anton, could I just ask you for a few closing comments? Sure. Um, you know, just to say we're, we're very excited to have our PA out in the market. We think it's a, a comprehensive document and we think that, it, it you know, if people read that, they, they'll have a good sense of, of really what we're doing uh, in terms of our strategy. Um, we think it's an exciting project. We think, um, you know, certainly what the PA demonstrates is that it's very economically viable uh, and we look forward to taking it to, to the next stage. 
Anton, thanks once again for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close this session, as you'll now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Zinwald Lithium PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good morning to you all.